Hey guys, this is Caspi with Tape, and today you join me for another episode of Subscriber Designs, not the Fighter Jet Showdown version, just the normal version, as these seem to alternate each week now. But the first thing we're looking at is, of course, the obligatory VTOL. This comes to me from Scarboy, and it is called Strike Wing VTOL. Yes, um, and it's, it's, it's a VTOL. It has two Panther engines here, um, which do the VTOLing, and a ramjet back here for doing the forwards. And that's a kind of interesting wing design, I guess, strike wing, but yeah, they're kind of triangular. I quite like it. Um, but yes, let's take off. Let's activate this, yes, and press, I'm guessing, one. Yeah, VTOL. Oh, shit, that jumps away pretty quickly. All right, and let's just bring this under control, shall we? Is that, that's, that looks good. And we'll activate that with two. Yes, it works. Okay, good. Standard controls, then. Um, and I should probably keep these gear deployed, actually. Um, okay. So now, we're going to head over to the vehicle assembly building, where we shall, uh, well, hopefully land. Yes, it's a, it's a it's pretty nice beetle. Very easy to control, from what I can tell so far. It's a little bit seamy. Like, you can see there's a bit of a seam here, which could be pressed together. Um, but yeah, I think that's mostly just, you know, how KSP is. Like, these wings, I know why they're there, because they provide a lot of control, but, um, they uh, quite, don't quite line up, but that's just because KSP. But yeah, no, I think generally, pretty nice looking, uh, it's pretty decent, you know? So anyway, let's go and land this on the... Oh, we've flown right over. Oh, it's been a while since I've done this, because I've been away for a week and haven't really recorded a normal subscriber designs in probably three weeks, so I haven't done my obligatory VTOL in a while. And it's actually just hovering here quite nicely. Um, we'll take the throttle down so it starts descending. Um, but yeah, so I might not be great at landing this on the VAB, because I haven't done it in a while, but it's a pretty controllable one. It's, uh, yeah, pretty decent, pretty good, pretty good. Let's just try and, yeah. Um, I think these must be, yeah, drone, drone cores, I guess. So I guess that provides SAS control. That's a nice way of doing it. Um, engines clip through here a bit, but I don't mind, you know, looks, looks nice enough. And, uh, yeah, oh, <laughs> that's like an alarm, the tape alarm, ooh, 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 when I'm about to crash a plane. I want to get it on the helipad, because that's where you land rockets. Okay, and, ooh, sail, oh, 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 ooh, okay, just gonna weave it down like this, just weave it, just weave, just a nice tight weave, and there we go, oh, that's a good, mm, that's a hard landing, oh shit, I accidentally hit G, oh, that's real bad, but yeah, there we <laughs> Go, it's basically landed. That is like 95% of a plane landed near where I wanted to land. I'm counting that as a success. As a success. So thank you to Scarboy for the VTOL, because I always like to start these episodes with a VTOL. But yeah, um, <laughs> perfect landing. Let's move on to the next thing. So the next thing we're looking at is simply called Missile Launcher. And it comes to me from Arif. Now you may be looking at this being like, there's no holes or missiles on the outside. How does it possibly launch a missile tape? You're lying to me. Well, actually, it does indeed have a solution to that. So, we press space real quick. We, uh, full throttle mode as well. Then we press four. And, oh, it opens up a bay. A custom missile bay. And you can see in there... There is a missile. This is really cool. This uses, um, obviously it decoupled, so it's two craft now. And uh, what this does is it uses um, a bunch of, oh no, it's, is it one craft now? I honestly don't know. It kind of looks like it's docked again. Anyway, but yeah, it uses these landing gear to push against these kind of custom made rails here, made out of beams, and lifts it up. And then these also kind of go out to extend and hold it up. And yeah, it looks like it does indeed dock. But uh, it's actually hard to tell, so it might, I think it is two craft right now. But I guess ideally it would be one craft, I don't know. But basically, yes, it has a missile in it. Even in this configuration, it can move around and drive and things, which is lucky, because we've got an invasion over here. There's a wall. Yes, it is the invasion of the walls. I don't know how much it cost, Mexico paid for it, but we must take it down, because it is coming. Well, it's not really move. Basically, I just needed a really big target to hit with a missile, because I'm not really good at controlling stock missiles. But yes, anyway, <laughs> let's drive down here. We've lined up. We've got the missile. Let's switch to the thing. Uh, this thing? Yeah. So we'll throttle up to maximum. We'll hit SAS. We'll fire the missile. There it goes. And oh, shit. Okay, yeah, that didn't go great. But it's fine, because I'm about to shoot a wall. 
with a missile. Um, and oh, oh, there we go. Oh, nailed it. We took it right out. We have got a tango down. Kerbin is safe from the wall. Um, but yes, so that's pretty cool. You can see it's just an effective missile launcher. It only carries one, but that's because most of all of this inside here is machinery. Um, and I do really love it. It's something really innovative, something I haven't really seen before. Because, well, I mean, you know, you do see some things that are kind of articulate and, and, and do cool things. Because it's quite hard to do that sort of thing in KSP because it's all very static. But I really like this just because... Look at it. It's so it, it does something different. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. So um, let's just fire one more of uh, those missiles so we can see how the missile properly works. And throttle up to maximum and fire. And there it goes. Oh, shit sticks. Okay, there we go. Yes, you can see it has a couple of little boosters here, which um, propel it out of the tank and into the air. And then it just has this little rocket max engine, burning liquid fuel NOx dizer to use as a cruise missile because now it can fly very fast. Very far, because it also has wings. We could throttle down a bit if we wanted to, but I'm not going to, because why would I throttle down? Um, and yeah, so it's actually a pretty effective cruise missile. So it's just nice to see some stock weaponry. I do a lot of BD armory on this, but it's really innovative, you know? There was a lot of, uh, before BD armory came along, there was a lot of uh, stock weaponry. And Macy Dean, of course. Um, although that's uh, a, a sore spot for many KSP viewers, because uh, he's uh, disappeared. Okay, anyway, <laughs> so we missed that. Um, but yeah. Anyway, as I said, thank you to this, uh, thank you to this, um, thank you to Arif for this, because it's really great, I love, I just love it. But anyway, let's move on to the next thing before I gush over this anymore. <laughs> so the next thing we're looking at is the Starlight 2 from Rockets Don't Make Good Toast. Now, Starlight is the name I call my rockets, uh, one of my sets of rockets in, um, uh, road to colonization, so I, I will be suing you in federal court. But uh, until then, let's just look at your craft. Um, no, this is the Starlight 2. It is a big-ass plane. It's a bit of a brute. A little, uh, I mean, it looks pretty cool. I, I don't know what this is about. There's a lot of tail planes all up in uh, the wings, but the wings look pretty good. Back here, they're a little jank, but I guess you didn't want to use two-week scale, so I respect your hustle. And then, uh, yeah, there's a few uh, little containers here, passenger modules. Um, I mean, each of these contains 16 people, and there's two rows of, like, two tiers. So I think it carries one, like, a million Kerbals about? Probably about a million. Um, so that's pretty impressive. Yeah, if there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, about twenty-three. So twenty-three times sixteen is just doing this totally in my head, didn't just open a calculator, you know that for sure. Um, that's 368 times 4, so that's, yeah, 1400 Kerbals, that's, mm, that's a big plane. Um, <laughs> 1400 Kerbals in one plane. Let's get it going, because the lag's intense, because this is 1100 parts. Um, which I believe is bigger than Collaboration Station was, which all of us YouTubers build. Which, yeah, uses these Goliath engines to pull it forward, carrying its thousand Kerbals, probably fairly slowly due to the lag. But yeah, currently it just has four Kerbals in it. Um, it has these little things at the back, any cargo in there? Just masses of fuel for whatever reason. But yeah, it's uh, not uh, not super pretty, but I love it because it's massive. So thank you to Rockets, uh, don't make good toast, because it's, uh, it's crazy. And I love it, because I love crazy bullshit. And ooh, it's listing to the, to the right... I don't know what that's about, but, I mean, physics probably doesn't know what's happening right here. Actually, it has two tailplanes. Big tailplane, respect. People make their tailplanes too small in KSP. Um, okay, let's just bring it under control going forward, and it should be pretty good. So, yeah, I mean, if maybe in the future, or if, I, if ever I get some supercomputer time, uh, this would be a viable craft for transporting transporting 1,500 kerbals somewhere. Um, you know when Matt lands, like, oh, I took 160 Kerbals somewhere. It's like, well, yeah, whatever, bro. Get your shit together. I got 1,600 Kerbals off in here. Although, actually, I think he took them to Elu, so I'm probably going to take these into the ocean. Um, but, you know, I mean, yeah, divided by 10, that equals Elu, so yeah, it's about the same. But, yeah, it's not uh, it's, it's not bad. It's a, it's a good-looking... Well, I was going to say good-looking. No, it's a brute, but it's a, it's a, it's functional, you know? It's not breaking. It's, it's running surprisingly. The lag's not great. Um, but yeah, um, hmm, is that gonna, those are some pretty big wings, they're gonna, that's gonna hit that, hmm, we should probably take off, right, uh, let's start pulling up, shall we, because we don't want to, 
I oh I've left I may have left this too late. It's for this is for we'll take off and we got time. We got time. We got time. We still got time. We got. Hmm. This is gonna. Oh no. Okay. Let's just be cool. Oh jeez. Okay. It's stopped. The game has stopped. Okay. I'm gonna just take my hands off the control. Oh no. Oh, it hit the. I thought it didn't think it was gonna hit the fucking little barrels. That's gonna be rough. That's a frame. Oh god. Okay. This is fine. This is fine though. Like. Ooh. Well, we don't need to. It's fine. We don't need to pay for that. Okay, we've still got... Huh, ooh, okay, it's listing, but we got this under control. If I can just keep this on the runway. We've still got most of a wing. I can fly this. Um, <laughs> huh, oh, hey, oh. oh, I'm going to keep it on the runway. I am God. Tape is God. Okay. Um, I, I, I exclaim that frequently, and I'm starting to think God's getting pretty mad. He's going to be like, dude, you can't... You, you got to stop. It's making me look bad. Okay, so... <laughs> Dude, I mean, how did that not come up in testing? Where did you take this off off from? Uh, maybe he has Kerbal foundries or something. No, Kerbal um, constructs. Okay, okay, we're good. If I can just pull this up. Okay, don't roll over, because that is a problem. Um, I mean, that's a lot of the wing we still have. I reckon this will fly. How did that not come up in testing? What the fuck, bro? How did I not see it coming, actually? Um, oh, it takes off. We're in the air. Oh, it takes off a little steep. How did this not come up in testing? Is this aerodynamically unstable? Well, currently, probably, but... Okay, it's fine. This is fine. Hey, oi. Oh, I can feel it coming under control. If we can just push the nose down a little bit. It's gonna stall. We are going to stall. Oh, no. We, we got this. Wings are coming apart there. There's a lot of... There's pretty high wing loading. Um... <laughs> Yeah, that's really coming apart. Not as bad as this one. I have to say, maybe it didn't come up in testing because it works fine without that much wing. This is an engineering marvel. It is still flying. Oh, fuck yeah. Yeah, you really want to pitch this forward a lot. Um, <laughs> maybe it didn't come up in testing because you're still testing because of all the lag. But I have to say... Despite that little snafu where half the wing got ripped off and destroyed a large portion of the space center, it's flying pretty well. I mean, the wings are... They're, cre they're really curving. This one is not in good shape. It is... It is really falling apart here, but it flies quite well. That's a nice thing in KSP, is if you have a lot of engines on a rocket and one of them explodes, it'll keep flying. If you have a lot of wing on an aircraft and one of them gets ripped off because it hits the tank, because how did that not come up in testing? <laughs> then it will still fly. Um, and it's it's starting to arch quite a lot, but I mean, airplane wings bend, you know. This is normal. This is fine. Everything about this is normal and fine. Anyway, um, <laughs> yeah, this was... Just going to be a little thing, but the lag and the just kind of awesomeness kind of prevented that. And let's just try and do some mad maneuvers, see if we can rip off that wing, shall we? Uh, really balance this out, bring back half the craft. Uh, I'm not going to try and land it, it would just take too much time. Okay, let's get some really high wing loading, try and rip this wing off. See how much we can curve it. You know, it's actually pretty durable, I have to say. This is a surprisingly maneuverable plane for the size that it is. But it has a lot of thrust, it's got a lot of wings. Um, less now, but, you know, it has a lot of wings. I would crash it, but I am scared it'll crash the game, and the game's already crashed today, so, uh, we're not gonna do that. <laughs> but, yeah, this is, this is pretty fucked. Um, I love it, though. So thank you to Rockets Make Good Toast. This is a surprising, weird, brute, beautiful plane, and, yeah. So, anyway, let's move on to the final thing we can look at today before this hits the ocean, because I'm sure it will crash the game. So, the final thing we're looking at today comes to me from Vavacat, and it is the KB-10 X-51. And it is based on the X-51, basically a big bomber that carries a little rocket plane up to an altitude where it can launch itself into space. So, we're going to take a look at this today. Um, it's pretty cool. It's an interesting looking bomber. It looks kind of really weird. I guess it's not based on the actual what, B-51 that they used. I'm not exactly sure what they used. Um, but yeah, let's anyway, let's just take this off um, and start going. So I'm just going to assume that staging does everything. There are some instructions which I've skimmed because um, <laughs> that's how I read instructions. And yeah, it's going largely sideways. That's fine. 
Um, it'll as long as we can get it in the air under control. Hmm, this might be hard to get it to go to space. Oh, how do you make this go? I'm gonna read the instructions. Um, when starting out with the bomber, limit the thrust in the far right engine. Ah, okay. Right, you could have done that, man. I mean, <laughs> that will make take uh make. The takeoff of such an asymmetric thing easier. Yeah, okay, fair. That's fair enough. So we're going to take that down to 10%. And we're going to log SES, throttle up, and go! Hopefully this will... Oh, now it's going forward. You're not wrong. Thank you for that. I should read the instructions. And then reach 9,000 meters. Okay, I guess that's my next thing. Um, cool. So we'll take you off. We'll probably just keep the thrust like this for a while. Until we need more, maybe. Um, it is still going sideways. Maybe I'll take this one down a little, just to kind of really bounce it out. There we go. That's nice. And it's pretty nippy, actually, because it's got two planes, I guess. Um, is rolling a little heavy, because obviously it's going to roll hard, because it has something pulling that down. Um, so yeah, obviously it is hard to take something asymmetrical like this to a high altitude, but I, I respect it, and it's flying pretty well. And that is how it was launched from the, uh, from the bomber in real life. It was hung on the side of one wing and was able to take off uh, you know, fairly easily, because in real life you have lots of things you can change. Whereas in KSP you just have a few tweaks that you can make. Anyway, so we're going to get up to 9 kilometers, and then it says, um, Quick save before the drop. Uh, transfer a guy into the X-51, there's no cobalt in there by default. Quick save again after that. I'll just quick save the first time. Yeah, I'll just quick save once. Um, drop by staging, then quickly switch to the F-51 by brackets, if it won't do that by itself. Okay, cool. Um, good instructions. Um, Activate engine and pitch up, climb at about 45 degrees. Thrust vector engine down to 30% when you're climbing at that angle. Let's do that before anything. Yeah, I feel like you could have done this, but I'm kind of enjoying the checklist, so I'm not complaining. Um, right, uh, drop the SRBs, drop the tanks after SRBs are stopped, watch LFO uh, levels in the tanks, and once they are empty, drop them. Oh, we're losing speed. Um, Otherwise, you'll have to not a fuel to orbit. Uh, don't lift up higher than 85 kilometers. Do not uh, thrust the vector more than 25% while in higher atmosphere. It's way too powerful for such a small craft. You'll burn up in... Oh, thrust the vector. I was like, you mean thrust vector? No, um, thr don't put the vector's thrust up more than 25% because it's just too powerful. That's fair. So it close carefully. You have very low margin for error. I'm going to fuck this up. I'm reading through this. Um, X-51 is unstable during re-entry. Use SES. If it spins out of control, try barrel rolling. Okay, yeah. I'm, I wouldn't give these instructions to the pilot, man, but okay. Um, it is traveling close to supersonic um, at 9 kilometers. I am going to get up to 9 kilometers. I'm going to quick save, and we're going to do all of the things. I'm going to transfer a guy now um, before all of this. I'm going to totally do this first. Okay, cool. Right. I really do like this. I know I've complained a bit about the uh, instructions because, you know... No, I like the instructions. I love checklists. Um, but I really like uh, satellite launching aircraft. I think they're really cool. And if they could be done reusably in KSP more easily without so many mods, I would definitely do it. But this is really cool. So anyway, we're getting up to about 9 kilometers. We're going to prepare to drop that aircraft. It's going to drop... Uh, we're going to quick save first because he said to. And probably because I'll fuck it up. So we're going to drop the aircraft and then fire up the engines because you do not want it to be... Um, a, yeah, well, quick save at 9 kilometers. Okay, so we're going to drop the aircraft. Let it go, and there it goes. Oh, I'm on a decoupler, and then we're going to fire up the boosters. Ho, 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 fire up the engines, bring us under control. How is it overtaking me? Oh my god, I am having serious trouble. Um, we gotta pull up. Oh, wow, I really fucked this up. Okay, I see why you said quick save. Okay, it's cool. We're good. We're good. It's a little unstable, but it's fine. Um, how are we doing on the Apple apps? This, whoo, this is a lot of things to do at once. <laughs> this is kind of cool. This is actually like a real challenge. Um, wow, that's still loaded in five kilometers away. Love it. Love everything about it. Um, yeah, we can throw a lot more. <laughs> he said not to, but I'm not listening to the person who made the craft and wrote some detailed instructions and clearly knows what he's talking about. I am probably going to um, run out of, of, uh, of liquid fuel. I think I'm going to fuck this up the first time in one way or another. Um, and we're also going very fast and are probably going to burn up. Um, 34 kilometers, yeah, I think I'm going too laterally. We're going to burn up and then, ooh, yeah, this is going to be real bad. 
Uh, how are we doing on the Apple Apps? This? Ooh, yeah, we've got a little time. 77. That'll do. That'll do. That'll do. Not bad. We might be able to do this. Maybe. All right, so we'll just cruise up, try and uh, burn off as little velocity as possible in this burning flames of awesomeness. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. <laughs> I've had some really interesting craft today. Um, that tank, that giant crazy plane that, you know, kind of broke this. That VTOL was pretty fun, easy to control. Crashed it a little bit because I'm not very good at things. Um, I'm probably not going to bring this back because I don't think I'll have enough fuel, but uh, maybe I'll give it a shot. And also, I've been recording for a very long time. <laughs> Okay, come on, let's go. All right, okay. All right, we're actually gonna be in the dark. Foolish me. Okay, let's get right up to Apoapsis and circulize, care circulize? Yeah, we're gonna circulize carefully. Um, and try and, yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, oh yeah, hold it. No, I don't want to, yes, yes, fucking my gimbal. Um, ah. Almost hit orbital velocity. If I'd done that a little better and hadn't fucked up the boosters, maybe that would have worked, and I'd love to try this a little more. But I, as I said, I've been recording for a while, and if I do, it will be a terrible video, because um, I get fatigued quite quickly. Um, we'll see if we can just bring it back, I guess, because we're on a suborbital trajectory. It will be in the dark, but hey, that's fine. That's basically impossible to see in KSP. But who cares? <laughs> I'll be able to see it. You won't. Um, but yeah! Uh, I'm just gonna leave SES doing its thing. We're gonna bring it back. See what happens. Well, not bring it back. Bring it somewhere. Um, yeah. Huh. But anyway, yeah, this has been another episode of Subscriber Designs. Next episode will, of course, be another fighter jet showdown. Probably be historical jets. Yeah, and this is, uh, this series has, I, I thought when I started it, um, that I'd really just run out of aircraft. Uh, I'd run out of submissions really quick. I thought people would just sort of lose interest and it would tail after a, a tail off the, after about 10 episodes. But I don't number these episodes, so you may not know, but this is episode 17. Um, and I'm getting more craft than ever. Um, in the old days of episode, you know, 1 to 5, I could look through everything and I'd actually be a bit stuck for stuff to make. And I didn't think I'd be able to make it every, uh, an episode every week. But now I get so many craft, like, I bet a lot of people aren't seeing their craft in the things. And I do apologize, because I'd love to include everyone's things, because you all make such amazing things. Um, sometimes you make stuff that doesn't, you know, just, it's wing fall. Why wasn't that called in testing? Why did the wing fall off that plane? <laughs> no, but it was amazing. Um, and yeah, but I just get about probably, you know, 30 to 40 emails between every episode. And it's just, it's a lot. So I can't look through everything anymore. Um, but it's pretty cool. It's like when people open uh, P.O. boxes, you know, the YouTubers, and they're like, oh, we'll get, like, some chips and a card. And then it's just like, yeah, we sent you a box of a million video games every week. And it's like, Jesus Christ. So, yeah, thank you to all of you for doing that, because it's, it's really cool to see, um, even if it does take up uh, a lot of my time looking through them now. I still do very much enjoy it. Anyway, yeah, so uh, this seems to be doing pretty well. You said it was unstable on re-entry. Seems to be kicking ass, man. This has been a really good craft, actually. I'm sorry I didn't get it to orbit, but, uh, you know, it was a difficult one. I might just play with it by myself later, because it's kind of cool. Um, but, yeah, anyway, so as I said, next episode will be historical fighter design, uh, fighter showdown. So get your stuff sent in. We've already got a few that we'll try and look at. But until then, if you're stuck for someone to watch, you can go check out my most recent episode of Prison Architect, in which someone escapes. I know, it's the worst prison. There's also my most recent episode of Road to Colonization, in which we try to land a big rocket on EVE, and we start fueling up our cargo spacecraft called the Canterbury. It's going to be awesome. Um, there's also links to my Twitter, Twitch, and Patreon in the description if you're interested. But as always, I hope you've enjoyed this. This has been Caspi with Tech. I'll see you next time.